our Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Okay, the purpose of this video is to explain how to find the largemouth bass in southern reservoirs uh, that have become dominated with the spotted bass. You know, spotted bass get into some of these large, clear reservoirs and they kind of take over and the largemouth bass population plummets and they can be hard to find. Uh, so the basic idea here is that most of the largemouth bass are going to be in the creek backs. So the spots take over in the open water that's clear where there's lots of uh, bait fish and not so much uh, structure and the largemouth bass persist in the creek backs. So the idea is that we want to get way back into the creek backs where the depth of the water is still 10 feet or shallower, 5 feet or shallower, and where the structure is dominated by natural structure as opposed to docks and rocks. You know, get back there where it's stumps and bushes. So this just happens to be a contour plot of Two Mile Creek in Lake Lanier, Georgia. But, you know, study the contour maps of whatever reservoir that you happen to be in that's been taken over by spots, but you know the large mouths are there somewhere, and find those creek backs. You know, any given creek, there's a spot in that creek channel that's, you know, 30 feet deep, there's a spot that's 20 feet deep, there's a spot that's 10 feet deep in the middle of the creek channel, so you want to be further up the creek than that 10 feet marker uh, and often further up the creek than even the five foot marker. If the water's stained, uh, you've gone probably gone far enough up the creek for largemouth bass. Now there's never any guarantees in these deals, right? You know, in the middle of the lake, it might be 90% spots, 10% largemouth bass. You get way back up in the creeks and the odds get a little more in your favor where it's probably going to be more like 50% largemouth bass. 50% spotted bass. Now, any given day, you can catch anything, right? But we're talking about the probabilities and where the largemouth bass are going to tend to want to spend most of their time. So that's what we're doing here. We're just going up the creek, uh, up the creek, up the creek. Uh, we found the water that's stained. Uh, we found some water with shad busting on top. We found the water that's well uh, beyond where there are still boat docks and, and rock formations are dominating, we found the water that uh, has lots of brush, lots of blowdowns, and is dominated by the kind of structure and shallower water and stained water that largemouth bass prefer. So you can study your contour maps, study your aerial uh, photographs to figure out and make your plan in advance where this water is going to be. But here's another tip. If you, if you keep a worm on a bobber and you throw a worm close to brush, if the panfish are comfortable coming way out, like three or four feet out from the brush to get that worm, those panfish aren't really worried about largemouth bass coming along and eating them. Uh, if you find a spot where you've got to cast that worm under the bobber, like just six inches or so from the brush in order for those panfish to come out and be interested in that worm. Those panfish are afraid because there's largemouth bass out and about, so the, they're sticking close to cover. All right, so here's a box shot of the uh, blueback herring that we're using for bait. Blueback herring just happened to be a, a very uh, abundant bait fish in Lake Lanier, Georgia, where we're fishing and we keep them alive in a 77 quart cooler. We don't even have an aerator, but uh, throw a few frozen water bottles in there, cools things down enough to keep them alive. And we're going old school with technology. We don't even have a trolling motor. We just hold our spot with an anchor. We're doing it the old fashioned way. Good enough to hook up with the fish back here at the creek back and uh, my bud's reeling them in. Doing a great job, having some fun. Uh, I've got to kind of encourage him not to try and pull the bass out of the water. I'm helping him hold the rod tip down there so I can get the net under the fish. Uh, when you when you want to flip them in the boat, there's a lot of chance that they get off sometimes, so we don't let that happen. 
And, you know, you're never going to have a day where you catch 20 largemouth bass like you might, might catch 20 spotted bass. Uh, but we get in a few. The Lord answered our prayers. We got some nice bass, a couple of catfish. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for answering our prayers. When I stand in glory, I will see His face. And there I'll serve my King forever in that holy place thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till the work on 